Okay, so last time we got to the point of asking the question, how many egos can you contain a hold? Now let's just recap. I am a container for egos. I am not an ego, I am a container for egos. And there's a primary ego, and there's lots and lots of other egos. Maybe my friends and family are also uh, containers that are also in there within me as uh, personalities. I'm a container for personalities. I'm a container for simulations of other people, of people. And my friends and family exist within my container. And also as many other as I like really, uh, personalities can exist within my container and attached to each one of these personalities can be a body of knowledge, a body of beliefs that way I can then empathize with what other people think and believe and sort of become them and perhaps this is not a accurate uh, becoming, that is to say I'm not necessarily able to really become them, I'm just becoming what I think they are. But this is the nature of simulation uh, it is imperfect, it is imprecise, this is accepted an accepted part of simulation and it's a basically a best guess about how people will respond in any given scenario and situation. So these little simulations are not the people themselves obviously they are just simulations based off my knowledge of these people. So the question was is there any kind of upper limit on the number of these personalities that I can simulate uh, contained within my container and obviously I think to a certain extent uh, some of it depends on the size of these uh, personalities and by size I mean uh, how complex an understanding have I managed to form of these people is it a very simple understanding of them or is it a complex understanding of them and when I say complex I don't mean like deliberately trying to be just complex for the sake of being complex but I mean complex in the sense that people are complex and they have like many ins and outs and no one has uh, no one is just a sort of cartoon character so the complexity of the character and it is probably a factor in the amount of space that they take up within the container and this is a bit of a guess to be honest but it would seem logical so it's easier to store sort of cartoon-like characters within my mind than it is to store actual real-life characters within my mind. And I think this is kind of what people tend to do anyway. They tend to oversimplify their opinion of other people, whether that's true or false. Some people like to project a very simplistic cartoon-like version of themselves. But in any case, it seems to me that the most efficient uh, way of storing these personalities, if you're just trying to get a uh, sheer number in there, is to store them as very oversimplified cartoon-like personalities. And this is fine, but it doesn't really answer the question. In fact, I don't really think you can definitely answer what the upper limit is. You can sort of think about maybe what's practical so if you think about what's practical, then it would seem that if it's possible, the most practical practical thing to do is, is to store these simplified personalities. In any more complex personality that you need to be able to simulate, just mix up these simplified personalities into a different mix. So some people might be, you know, personality type A and a little bit from personality type B with some personality type C thrown in whilst others might have a different mix of personalities. And that way you only have to really store the personalities and the nature of the mix of those personalities. In a conflict, perhaps, of those personalities, which would win out? Which is uh, more dominant, which is slightly less dominant, which is the, the, the personality which is the least dominant? And so you can use these sort of fragmented cartoon-like personalities and combine them into a complex personality. A bit like the way if you're painting you use a fairly limited number of colours but then you combine them into other colours and give the impression of form and shape 
uh, or in the way that when you play music you've got a limited number of notes but then you combine them together into sort of much more rich interesting tapestry so in terms of space saving efficiency it would seem like this is the most natural way to go and I would like to suggest that uh, this all links to polytheism and archetypes and the more modern sense of polytheism and so when you're trying to empathize with someone uh, if you use this sort of approach uh, a, a, a sensible way of trying to do this is maybe trying to break down kind of what their different personality type mix they have and trying to see which one of these cartoons fits best and then second best and third best and fourth best etc. Of course this is only going to be perhaps a pale reflection of what the actual person is like. And if we just draw this back to the discarding of knowledge and information minimalism, a lot of the beliefs and therefore to a large extent knowledge that a, a complex personality would have is actually derivable from their mix of, shall we call them, elemental personalities, archetypes, gods if you will. I suppose the real question is, is there going to be anything out of the ordinary that stands out um, which isn't really part of this very uh, formulaic approach to deconstructing people's personalities? Is there going to be some kind of belief in there which just doesn't fit the mould? And I'd like to think a lot of the time, no, but perhaps maybe the odd one, uh, because obviously I wouldn't like just the this theoretical approach to uh, rule out the possibility of, uh, of a more practical and intuitive approach. So I think the next question is how can we actually distill these types of personality and what are they? I mean surely it's very difficult to put your finger on these cartoon figures. You'd have to come up with some set of cartoons. It might not apply to everyone. Uh, people are going to be exposed to different cultures. Uh, therefore they're going to have different sort of cartoons, uh, components. I think perhaps maybe it's a nice idea but theoretically uh, maybe things can be broken down into these simpler cartoon-like components um, but perhaps in reality that is uh, an oversimplification. However, having said that, these cartoon-like components probably do exist in your mind, in your preconceptions and limited way of thinking. 